Hey everyone, Raif Darazi here, and this is your weekly roundup of the latest HIV news for the week of June 17th to June 23rd. I'll be covering 12 articles covering topics ranging from ACTG's first HIV cure clinical trial in Africa, concluding that people with HIV can be sperm and egg donors, the unrecognized adrenal deficiency that is common in people living with HIV, the challenge of addressing the needs of people aging with HIV, and more. I won't be reading the articles per se, but I will give you a brief summary and sometimes throw in my own opinion and or commentary. A big shout out and thank you to Dennis Nelson for $50 in super thanks, Andre Bisson for $20 via PayPal, Tan Anderson for two $15 super thanks, Anthony Geary for an $8 super thanks, and Constantino Ferrer for $2 super thanks. I appreciate the support so, so much. All right, diving right in. Number one, advanced science news. Antibodies from llamas bring scientists closer to an HIV treatment. Researchers have developed a new strategy to combat HIV type 1 using nanobodies from llamas. These tiny virus-targeting nanobodies, when combined with a specific human antibody, significantly lower the chances of the virus escaping neutralization. Llamas produce heavy chain-only antibodies, which are smaller and more effective at binding to the virus. By immunizing a llama over several months, scientists were able to produce these nanobodies and combine them with human antibodies to create a powerful bispecific antibody. This new antibody can target multiple sites on the virus, making it difficult for HIV to mutate and escape treatment. While promising, the approach needs further validation and refinement for practical use in humans. Number 2. AIDS Map Adrenal insufficiency common in people with HIV, often unrecognized. Researchers from Uganda highlight that adrenal insufficiency, a condition where the body produces insufficient cortisol and other critical hormones, is common in people with HIV or tuberculosis. This condition can lead to various symptoms such as extreme tiredness, weight loss, and salt cravings, which often overlap with other illnesses, making diagnosis difficult. In severe cases, it can cause an acute adrenal crisis, a medical emergency requiring immediate treatment. The study found a high prevalence of adrenal insufficiency in people with HIV at 28% and tuberculosis at 33%, particularly in Africa and Asia. This suggests that healthcare providers should consider adrenal insufficiency when treating patients with these conditions who present with nonspecific symptoms. Number 3. Cell.com Vaccine induction of heterologous HIV-1 neutralizing antibody B-cell lineages in humans. A major challenge in developing an HIV vaccine is the difficulty in stimulating the production of broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs, in humans. The HVTN133 clinical trial explored a new vaccine approach using a peptide liposome immunogen to target B-cell lineages that produce BNABs against HIV-1. The study showed that this method could quickly induce these BNABs and their precursors, which were able to neutralize various HIV-1 strains after just two immunizations. This proof-of-concept study highlights a promising strategy for creating an effective HIV vaccine by rapidly initiating B-cell lineages and enhancing antibody binding through specific mutations. Number 4. NIH.gov U.S. clinical trials begin for twice-yearly HIV prevention injection. Two clinical trials are underway to evaluate a new long-acting HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, called lenacapavir in cisgender women and people who inject drugs. Sponsored by Gilead Sciences and implemented through the HIV Prevention Trials Network, or HPTN, these studies will assess the safety, acceptability, and how the drug moves through the body. Lenacapavir, administered by injection every six months, is already FDA-approved for treating certain HIV infections. These trials aim to provide insights into how these underrepresented groups experience lenacapavir-based PrEP, with a focus on including diverse participants. Results will contribute to the global development of lenacapavir as an HIV prevention method. Number 5. Sky News HIV drugs ritonavir and lopinavir trialed in people with neurofibromatosis. 2. Brain Tumors Scientists are investigating whether the HIV drugs ritonavir and lopinavir can shrink tumors in patients with neurofibromatosis 2, or NF2, a genetic condition causing tumors to grow along nerves, leading to symptoms like balance issues, hearing loss, and headaches. A trial involving 12 people will test these drugs, following lab studies showing potential to shrink and slow down NF2 tumors. This could pave the way for a significant treatment breakthrough as currently, surgery is the only option. If successful, the trial could lead to larger studies, offering hope for better, non-invasive treatments for those affected by NF2. By the way, if you're living with HIV and you'd like to join a community of 
1,400 people living with HIV, join my Telegram group. Download the Telegram app first, then click the link to the group in the description box below this video. One of the moderators should promptly let you in. Number six, The Hill. AIDS amnesia is putting women's lives at risk. A recent CDC report shows that while overall HIV infections in the U.S. are decreasing, they are not declining among women. Historically, women were excluded from HIV AIDS research, leading to a global rise in female HIV cases. Now, women make up 54% of people with HIV worldwide and 24% in the U.S. Advances in HIV prevention and treatment like pre-exposure prophylaxis and antiretroviral therapy have been significant, but misconceptions about HIV being under control risk resurgence. Programs like PEPFAR and the Ending the HIV Epidemic Initiative are crucial but face funding challenges. President Biden's executive order on women's health research and increased investment in HIV initiatives are needed to combat HIV effectively and prevent a resurgence. Number seven, better health for all. Are trans men being forgotten in conversations about HIV prevention? Discussions about HIV in the trans community often focus on the high rates in trans women, especially those who have sex with men. However, recent studies suggest that trans men, assigned female at birth, might be at similar risk. Trans men who have sex with men are at higher risk due to being the receptive partner. Young trans people, migrants, sex workers, and people from global majority backgrounds are also at increased risk. Despite this, data on trans men and non-binary individuals is limited and often excludes them from effective care and interventions. Trans people frequently face discriminatory and inadequate health care, leading to gaps in HIV prevention and treatment. There is a need for more inclusive and comprehensive data, better access to PrEP, and improved health care services to address these disparities. Number 8. NPR People with HIV are aging, and the challenges are piling up. Malcolm Reed, an HIV advocate, marked 28 years since his diagnosis, highlighting the challenges of aging with HIV. Reed, now 66, manages multiple health issues including kidney cancer, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Despite advancements in HIV treatment, over half of the HIV-positive population in the U.S. is over 50, and this number is expected to grow. And aging with HIV brings additional health risks. But the healthcare system is ill-prepared to meet their needs. Dr. Melanie Thompson, an HIV specialist, warns, I think we're at a tipping point. It would be very easy to lose the substantial amount of the progress we have made. The Ryan White HIV AIDS program struggles with flat funding and increasing demand, while political challenges threaten support for HIV services. To address these issues, a new HRSA initiative aims to improve care for older people with HIV. But advocates stress the urgency for better healthcare strategies to prevent a crisis. Number nine, the body pro. What criteria should describe HIV-related cognitive impairment? Until 2022, people living with HIV in the UK were banned from becoming commercial airline pilots due to concerns about neurocognitive impairment. This policy was overturned after being challenged for discrimination. Dr. Sam Nightingale explains that was frank discrimination as a result of a misrepresentation of the issue, end quote. He argues that modern antiretroviral therapy, or ART, reduces the risk of cognitive decline, an outdated criteria for HIV-associated neurocognitive disorder, or HAND, contribute to stigma. To address this, Nightingale and international experts propose new criteria, HIV-associated brain injury, or HABI, which better reflect current realities. However, some experts like Dr. Lucette Sisik believe that while the HAND criteria need updating, they still provide essential standardization for diagnosing cognitive impairment. Both sides agree on the need for research and clearer clinical guidelines aiming for better care for people living with HIV. Number 10, BBC. People with HIV can be sperm and egg donors. The UK is updating its law to allow same-sex couples with non-transmissible HIV to donate eggs or sperm and become parents, reflecting advancements in science. With highly effective medication, the risk of passing HIV can be eliminated. The change aims to improve IVF access and ensure equal rights. Deborah Gold from the National AIDS Trust calls it a huge win for HIV and LGBT plus rights, emphasizing the positive impact on families. Additionally, ministers are eliminating extra screening costs for female same-sex couples undergoing shared motherhood IVF. Health Minister Maria Caulfield says these changes will create a fairer system, enabling more people to fulfill their dream of becoming parents. Number 11, CNBC. 
Gilead's twice yearly shot to prevent HIV succeeds in late stage trial. Gilead's experimental HIV prevention medicine, lenacapavir, was 100% effective in a late stage trial involving about 2,000 women, prompting the company to offer it to all participants. This development marks a significant step towards introducing a new form of pre exposure prophylaxis that is administered twice yearly. Jared Baton, Gilead's VP of Clinical Development for HIV, said, What the world needs is people to have more PrEP options so they can make the choice of the option that's going to work best for them. The company aims to replicate these results in ongoing studies and could bring lenacapavir to market by late 2025 if successful. And last article, number 12, Globe News Wire. ACTG announces launch of its first HIV cure clinical trial in Africa. The ACTG has announced the opening of the PAUSE study, the first HIV cure clinical trial in Africa to evaluate the safety and efficacy of two long-acting, broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs, in adults living with HIV who pause their antiretroviral therapy. This phase one double-blind study will involve 48 participants who are virally suppressed by a ART. They will either receive the BNABs or placebo, then discontinue ART for closely monitored periods. In order to ensure that the HIV cure approaches we develop are broadly effective and accessible, it is vital that HIV cure research be conducted among the global population of people living with HIV, said ACTG Chair Judith Currier. The study aims to understand the efficacy of these BNABs in maintaining viral suppression without art. Links to all these articles can be found in the description box below this video. And if you'd like to join my new mailing list, I'm continuing to build up that email database. There's a link in the description box below as well. Once I get a good number of folks in the email list, I'll start putting together quarterly email blasts with updates on me, teasers of what's to come, some news highlights, perhaps share some thoughts on the state of things and maybe some fun surprises too. As usual, it's totally free and you get to stay better connected with me and what's going on. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. Share this with anyone who might find value in this content. Those are the best ways that you can help support me and my channel. Until next time, cheers.